Good morning everyone, welcome to Montana for the first time on this trip. This is the last day of a five day trip. I'm gonna try to drive home later today, but I'm like six hours from home, so I don't know if that'll actually pan out or not. I'm about half a mile north of the Wyoming state line. I just passed it over here, not too far back. I'm at a place called Petroglyph Canyon, which should give you an idea of what I'm here to see. The trail heads off into the canyon this way. Let's get the hiking shoes on and go for a little walk. These are my camp shoes, by the way. They're just little slip-ons. The brand is Sanuk. But for hiking, I wear these guys. These are the La Sportiva Wildcats. And they are in rough shape. This is probably my sixth pair of these shoes. I love these shoes, but I hike a lot and I go through a lot of them. They're, they're blown out on the side here. The bottoms have basically no tread left. They're just flat. I think it's about time for a new pair. One of you guys actually just sent me an REI gift card, so I'm going to use that to buy a new pair of shoes. So thank you to the kind viewer who did that. The sign of the trailhead talks about how the rock art was created 850 to 1250 years ago, and I thought this was kind of funny. So they're talking about vandalizing rock art, and you can see someone wrote Andy here. It says, we know who spoiled this petroglyph for you, your children and everyone else, Andy. Very passive aggressive there. This is a beautiful sight. Looks like the trail leads on down into the canyon here. I've never been here before, and I hope I can find the rock art. I saw some conflicting reports online of people who came here and weren't able to find it. I think they might have been further down that way. I think I think I should be able to find the rock art here, but who knows? Let's wander around and find out. It's my understanding that the Native Americans who were in this canyon here we're here because of these. These are potholes that obviously fill up with water when it rains, and these provide a nice uh, longer-term water storage solution than other places in the area. And uh, while they were here, they decided to leave their mark on the, on the walls of the canyon. Oh, here we go. Here's the first panel. Could be uh, an extended family unit. Here's my hand to give you a sense of scale of the figures here. Mostly people. Got a couple animals here too. Ah, we are at the infamous Andy panel. But they've carved out his name here, so take that Andy. What do you think this is? Never seen anything quite like that. Looks like a dog here. And I like these figures here, this little hunting panel. That was an interesting little spot, a nice way to start the day. Not a super extensive collection of rock art, but there were some nice panels there and some interesting images. And the plan now is to go into the mountains, specifically these mountains. This low mountain range on the horizon here, these are the Pryor Mountains. Now I had never heard of this mountain range until like six months ago when I was just looking at the map. And by the way, I get asked a lot about how I find interesting places to see, interesting things to do. Just looking at maps, spending a lot of time with maps is a great way to do that. It's one of the main sources that I use. Uh, Google Maps, USGS topographical maps, whatever kind of map you can find. Anyway, I saw this mountain range on the map and I did some Googling and it turns out there's a lot of really interesting stuff up there. So this video is going to be spent exploring these mountains. First off, I'm going to drive to the top. I'm not sure what the state 
what the condition of the road is. It might be a pretty mellow dirt road. It might be a, a four wheel drive high clearance road. I don't know. Only one way to find out. Well, after about two hours of driving, it was pretty slow going. We've made it up to the top of Big Prior Mountain, 8,776 feet. It's the highest point in the Prior Mountains. It's basically just flat up here. It's very flat, rounded. There's not a whole lot of anything, except for one interesting thing that I want to go see over here. I think it's kind of close to these trees. I've always thought that someone should write a book about mountains that you can drive up in the western U.S. It's great to hike up mountains, climbing mountains, you know, that's great. But it's nice sometimes to just drive to the top of a mountain, especially for those who can't hike or climb. So there's a free idea for you. Anyone interested in writing that book, please do, and I'll be the first to buy a copy. The road up here, by the way, was pretty rough in places. High clearance was definitely needed, as it was for Petroglyph Canyon. There were some really steep washed out areas where you needed some clearance to go uh, to go down into and out of some pretty big dips. So literally about a one minute walk from the summit is a cave. Not just any cave, but this is an ice cave. Apparently there's ice and snow in here year round. Also apparently there are a couple of entrances. I don't know if this one, I mean this one looks pretty uh, difficult so I'm gonna Maybe look around for the other entrance to get down in there. Oh wow, from the other side here, I can actually see that there is snow in here. Dirty snow. That's amazing. I'm recording this at the end of August. You'll be seeing this a month or two later, but that's, that's pretty impressive. So I think I can climb down right here, but I think the second entrance is just down the hill here. Here's the hole in the ceiling, that first entrance that I got to and looked down into. We got our dirty patch of snow here. And then the rest of the cave is bigger than I would have thought. Let me go stand back in here to give you a, a sense of scale. Here's an interesting boulder on the floor of the cave here. It's got lots of little smaller rocks embedded in it. Check this out. There are these big circular holes in the ceiling that I guess are from rockfall. Rocks have fallen out of here. Neat place. So this mountain range, the Prior Mountains, is essentially made up of two big mountains. And uh, this is one of them, Big Prior Mountain. The other one is across the way here, and it's called East Prior Mountain. It's only about six feet lower than the one that I'm on now. The trick is getting over there, so I think there's a road that'll kind of connect, that'll go down into the valley between the two mountains, and then back up and over. If not, I'm gonna have to basically go all the way out of the mountains, do a U-turn and come back in, which I'm hoping I can avoid doing. 
I'm not gonna film much of the drive between here and there. I just wanna focus on <laughs> getting there and you've already seen me do some, some driving up here, quite a bit of driving up in these mountains. So I'll meet back up with you somewhere over there, hopefully in an hour or two. Well guys, I think I aged a few years on that drive, on those switchbacks down the mountain. Very narrow. I had to squeeze by just tons of trees. Uh, I had to move several of the trees. I don't know how many of those shots I'll actually include in what you guys saw, but I had to move probably 10, 12 trees out of the way to stop them from scratching or impaling the car and I didn't know if I'd have enough room at the at the corners at the bends to, to turn each time and it was nerve-wracking beautiful but nerve-wracking and uh, I think I actually might have scratched the Land Cruiser on uh, on one of the early logs that I didn't remove and anyway that took almost two hours uh, from the top of that mountain to here here being another ice cave I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here because we already went to one over on the other mountain, but this one is called Big Ice Cave, and uh, like there's a little parking area and picnic area, and there are even steps leading down and more steps down here. I think the entrance to the cave is right here. Beautiful place, much more forested, much more green than the, than the other mountain. Also, I've been listening to an audiobook about a shipwreck in the ensuing survival saga. Uh, it's nonfiction. It's called In the Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Philbreck, I think. Just an epic story. If you haven't heard that, I highly recommend it. I got the audiobook from Audible. I'll put links to it down below in the description if you want to read or listen to it. So at the end of the platform here, I'm completely surrounded by ice. This is all ice. And out in the middle, in all the pictures I've seen, this is a full column. It's like a, a stalactite. But here it's just a little cone on the ground. Half of a stalagmite. Neat area though. I'm gonna be quiet here and boost the audio volume a little bit so you can hear the drip, drip, drip of the water in the cave here. That is definitely, definitely ice. I'm now on the broad summit plateau of East Pryor Mountain. This is Big Pryor Mountain out here. That's what I drove to the top of earlier. The summit of this mountain is over here and I think I'll probably drive over there in a minute. But first I'm headed in this direction. After an easy five minute stroll, and man, look at the, the clouds here. I think we might be getting some weather here pretty soon. Uh, after a five minute stroll, I'm at a place called Dry Head Vista. Great views over here of the, the eastern side of, of the mountains here. And then over here, these are the Bighorn Mountains. And this is Bighorn Canyon. 
through which the Bighorn River flows. So everything that I've seen and done today has been in the southern half of the Pryor Mountains. The northern half is Crow Land. It's the Crow Indian Reservation. Another name for the Crow is the Absorca. Uh, and if you remember back to the last video, we were in the Absorca Mountains. Same, same word, same name, same people. And so historically, all of this was Crow Land. And they have an interesting name for the spot that I'm at right now. And that is where they saw the rope. And there's a fascinating story behind that. So members of the Crow tribe would come up here and spend days up here fasting and on vision quests, fasting for vision quests. And one time there were some people camped down here and they looked up to here to where I am now and they saw a guy dragging a buffalo skull behind him. There were ropes attached to the skull, uh, from the skull to his back and the ropes were anchored into his back with wooden stakes into his back muscles. And so he was dragging that buffalo skull around and blood was just running down the ropes. And the people down here, down below, who were camped down here, they could see the blood glistening from the ropes. And so that's why this place is called where they saw the rope, or this area is called where they saw the rope. Isn't that fascinating? And on that theme, in that same vein, I'm gonna go wander over this way and try to find some things that I think I can find and that I think still exist. Give me five or 10 minutes and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, here is the first one that I've come across. So this is a Native American fasting bed. Like I said, they would come up here and they would face east and they would lie down in these little structures, these little windbreaks, I guess, and they would fast here. That's why they're called fasting beds. I think there might be more up here. Let's look around a little bit more. And this is fasting bed number two. And here's number three. And here we have a couple of cairns, a couple of rock piles, and this. I'm not sure what this is. I thought it might be a, a, like a hearth, a, a spot for fire, an enclosed fireplace, but I don't see any any soot in there, so I'm not entirely sure. There is this gourd on top here. What a great day. I need to get out of here. I think there's some weather moving in. It's getting more windy. These dark clouds are approaching. But I hope you enjoyed the video. What a cool place. What an interesting place. Probably the most interesting mountain range you've never heard of. Again, if I hadn't just been browsing the map and then looking up information about the range, I never would have found this place. So I have about an hour of driving to get out of the mountains. And then once I'm out of the mountains, I have probably six or seven hours of driving. It is 2.30. I should be able to get home tonight if I want to drive through the darkness, which I don't love doing because I'm afraid of hitting deer or elk or whatever, but I might have to do it tonight. Guess we'll see. And then this is the last video from this trip. Hope you enjoyed the whole trip. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next one. I gotta get out of here. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.